The Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor is unequivocally the most powerful air dominance fighter ever built by human hands. It is a fifth generation single seat, twin engine, all weather stealth tactical fighter. While the United States Air Force initially planned to receive 750 of these advanced tactical fighters, astronomical cost overruns, sustainment short-sightedness, the inability to be exported, and the upcoming F-35 Joint Tactical Fighter Program would plague the F-22's production and hamstring its full potential. The Air Force would end up with only 187 of these incredible machines and plan to completely maximize the return on investment with multiple service life upgrades to keep the Raptor on the cutting edge of technology. However, like with any story, we must start back at the beginning. In 1981, the United States Air Force identified a future requirement for an advanced tactical fighter that would eventually replace the F-15 and F-16s, even though these fighters were still brand new at the time. The Cold War was an era of much uncertainty and fear, which drove the accelerated development of military technology across the entire spectrum of warfare. The U.S. felt that if they delayed any further developments and began getting comfortable with the weapons they produced, that the communist regimes of the world would quickly move to close the technology gap. The fear was that the Russian MiG-29s and newer Su-27 family of aircraft were too comparable in compatibility to the newly fielded F-16s and F-15s, thus the need to widen the technology gap was called for, and the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program was born. Being primarily focused on air-to-air -air dominance, the ATF program would eventually yield two contenders in the late 1980s. Hoping to get their hands on a massively lucrative contract, seven leading aerospace defense companies would answer the call to develop the new advanced aircraft. These companies were Lockheed, Boeing, McDonnell Douglas, General Dynamics, Northrop, Grumman, and Rockwell. Grumman and Rockwell would eventually fall out, leaving Lockheed, Boeing, and General Dynamics to agree to form a collaborative development team, leaving Northrop and McDonnell Douglas to do the same. In 1986, the Department of Defense would pick the Lockheed and Northrop designs and give the companies 50 months to build and successfully flight test their prototypes. Northrop would go on to produce two YF-23 Black Widows and Lockheed would produce two YF-22 Raptors. The primary requirements for the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program were super cruise, super maneuverability, and stealth, with a combat focus being air-to-air -air dominance as a result. After many airframe redesigns due to the Air Force's constant requirement changes, the F-22's maiden flight would take place on the 29th of September, 1990. Following a thorough demonstration and evaluation board, the final version of the YF-22 won out over the YF-23 despite being slightly slower and having a marginally bigger radar cross-section. The F-22's vastly superior maneuverability was the determining factor in its selection, and I have a feeling aesthetics may have played a role as well as the F-22 looks far more contemporary in design, while the F-23 looks more alien and futuristic, though both designs are beautiful. Pratt & Whitney would win the engine contract to produce the immensely powerful F-119 PW100 augmented turbofan engines that would push the Raptor into an easy supercruise with their 26,000 pounds of dry thrust each, while being capable of easily exceeding Mach 2. Fast forward to September 1997, and the first F-22 to resemble what would eventually become the production variant took its first flight. Following many years of reclassification, mission and requirement redesigns, and operational difficulties, the F-22 would finally enter initial operational capability in December of 2005 with the first training aircraft being delivered two years earlier to Tyndall Air Force Base in 2003. The F-22 would go through many modifications throughout its lifetime, primarily in the area of avionics and weapons development and deployment. The first blocks of the F-22 were limited on what munitions they could carry, and due to cost overruns, it was left to later upgrades to flesh out the full combat capabilities of the F-22, many of which were finally completed as recently as 2011. 20 years after the aircraft first flew. These same cost overruns would drive Congress to continuously lower the overall number of F-22s produced, dropping it from 750 to just 187 units, only 25% of the initial program's requirement. As a result, the last production aircraft was delivered to the Air Force in 2012. Despite this substantial cut in numbers, the United States Air Force considers the F-22 critically integral to its air superiority mission set. 
As the airframe has matured, its combat capabilities have also been proven, seeing combat over Syria, Iraq, and Afghanistan, which of course are the deployments made known to the public. Following multiple red flag exercises, F-22s would dominate in simulated war games. 12 F-22s from the 94th Fighter Squadron would tally 108 confirmed kills with zero losses. Later on, 14 F-22s would lead a large Blue Force strike group against aggressor F-15s and F-16s where they would rack up 241 kills with only two losses, and those losses were not F-22s, but instead other Blue Force aircraft. This means that it would take only a handful of Raptors, armed with the logistical backing that only the United States can provide, to completely cripple the entire Air Force of over 80% of the world's militaries. Another instance of the F-22's dominance was on display when in 2013, an F-22 snuck up on an Iranian F-4 Phantom that was chasing a US Navy drone. Noticing the lack of potent munitions on the Phantom, the Raptor pulled up next to the F-4 and over the international frequency squawked, you guys really ought to go home, dispersing the Phantom in a confused and undoubtedly terrified hurry. The F-22's armament is not as expansive as many other fighters in the Air Force inventory, but is more specialized to carry the most advanced variants of these munitions currently available. The AIM-120 Delta and AIM-9X are the standard air-to-air -air mixture holding the sidewinders and an internal side bay just forward of the leading edges of the wings, and the enhanced AMRAMs in the underside main weapons bay. Six AMRAMs can be stored in the main bay at once, or two AMRAMs and either two 1,000 pound JDAMs or eight 250 GPS guided small diameter bombs. Rounding out the standard weapon complement is an internally mounted M61A2 Vulcan cannon with 480 rounds. External wing hardpoints may also be utilized to further enhance the Raptor's lethality at the cost of its stealth signature. Additionally, the two most inboard hardpoints are reserved for external drop tanks for long-range ferry flights and overseas deployments. While this dramatically extends the Raptor's combat radius, aerial refueling to cross the pond is still required. The F-22 has an all-glass cockpit with multiple MFDs that feed the pilot situational data from multiple sensors around the aircraft. The powerful AN-APG-77 version 1 is the heart of this lethal electronic matrix, allowing air-to-air -air and air-to-ground modes to be engaged seamlessly during operations. Other internal subsystems include Link-16 data transfer, multifunctional information distribution system, joint tactical radio system, or MIDS-JTRS, Battlefield Airborne Comms Node, and an Automatic Ground Collision Avoidance System, or AutoGCAS. Future upgrades include an advanced infrared search and track system and more durable stealth coatings to enhance its already minute radar cross-section. Lethal. Aware. Dominant. The F-22 continues to push the envelope of what is possible in aerial warfare. The program continues to be funded well into the 2030s and shows no signs of stopping. Well guys, that's all I have for this showcase video. I want to thank you so much for watching. Shoot me a comment below on an aircraft or vehicle that you want to see showcased in a future video. And if there is a mod for it on the workshop, I will see to it that it gets added to the list of mods to showcase. As always, I'd like to say a massive thank you to my god tier patrons for their continued support of me and my channel. And of course, I want to thank you, the viewer, for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. All of our back and forth in the comments helps my videos flourish, and I love all the interaction with you guys. Thank you all again for your time and for watching, and I will see you in the next video.